Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Well, check out Deal to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something that will inspire you. Just go to Deal to Heal Teas. Dot my Shopify dot com. That's deal to heal teas. Get some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That's deal to heal teas at deal to heal teas dot my Shopify dot com. Hi guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you'll enjoy the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James. And on my podcast, my guests and I discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can and should live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with their problems, Heal from the pain and to fulfill their purpose. So check out our podcast. We're on Google Podcasts, Spotify, or even on Audible. And if you want to watch the podcast, check us out on our YouTube channel at Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. Until then, see you soon. Welcome to the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast with E. James. We believe that the relationship between a dad and daughter is one of the most important relationships in a woman's life. Our mission is to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by spreading the voices of girl dads to the world and give love and support to all of our dads and their daughters. Let's get to it. Let's tune in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast. I am your host, Ernest James, and I believe that the relationship between a dad and a daughter, a father and a daughter, is one of the most important relationships in a young woman's life. Therefore, I'm on a mission to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by spreading the voices of girl dads to the world and give love and support to all of our dads and their daughters. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to listen, like, subscribe, and share our podcast on all of your social media platforms and your podcast listening platforms. Um, Also, make sure that you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel. We actually share a YouTube channel with our partner podcast, um, The Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. And usually I would say go to that channel. But Big news, we actually changed our channel from the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast channel to the Deal to Heal podcasting network because we are now going to be uh, hosting on that same channel several different podcasts. Right now, we do have the Girl Dad Discussions podcast is there as well as uh, the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast is also there. Um, But we have two other podcasters already uh, in production right now that'll be coming soon. And we have uh, some more podcasts to come. So make sure you guys follow us on YouTube at the new channel, which is the Deal to Heal Podcasting Network. And that way you will get the uh, Girl Dad Discussions podcast, as well as the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast, plus our podcast that we have uh, coming up. Also, I'm going to tell you guys how you can win $100 from the podcast. But you got to stay until the end of the podcast in order to get that information. So today, just like any other day, we are blessed with the guest, Mr. Charles Smith. How are you doing? I'm good, King. I'm good. I'm good. All right. All right. First of all, let me say thank you for being here Uh, because you could have been doing anything else with anyone else, but you took out time to be here with me and my audience, and I definitely appreciate it. So do me a favor. We're going to jump right in. Uh, introduce yourself to my audience and let us know who you are and a little bit about what you do. 
Yes, sir. Uh, I am Charles W. Smith, Jr. Uh, I'm a three-time award-winning entrepreneur of Gentleman Boutique by Gone out of El Paso, Texas. It's a main clothing store um, that I own. I have the privilege of owning. And then I'm also a three-time published author. And I'm on my third book, which is had just finally released. It's called The Reboot My Way of Thinking, um, which intertwines with me being a motivational speaker as well with the message, The Reboot. Um, oftentimes people say, what is the reboot? Well, right behind me, you see the power button. Every day we see a power button in our lives. If we're turning on the TV, if we're turning on, if you got push to start in your vehicles, um, whatever the case is, once we push that button, we're expecting something to change. However, when it comes to us as individuals, when it comes to pain or just even getting through point to point A to point B, we have trouble, we get stuck. And a lot of times we don't know what we're doing. So it's not very rare when people say, oh, just reboot. You know, people don't talk about it like that. But imagine you reboot it. Imagine you could push the button. What if it was pushing the button of changing the way I handle money to better my finances or pushing the button to change my relationship so I can have the one that I desire to have. So it's just simple as that. But that's just uh, another day for another topic. But that's what the reboot is and, and what I do. All right. All right. And I, I like that. I like that. I'm definitely going to have to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm definitely going to have to have you on the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast so we can have that discussion because uh, I, I like that idea. Um, so what we're here on the Girl Dad Discussions podcast, which means that you are a girl dad. So my yes, very fir first question I'm going to ask is, what is your daughter's name? I, I always got to remember to ask that because I get on here and we start talking to the dads and I'm like, we don't even say what our daughter's name is. <laughs> so what is your daughter's name? Yes, sir. My daughter is Camille May Smith. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. Okay. So, uh, Charles, we're going to jump right in. So my first question that I want to ask you, what does it mean to you to be a girl dad? Uh, you know what? It's 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 the most beautiful thing that I treasure, and I I treasure it in a way. I'm an entrepreneur, so the way I handle my businesses, I feel like you know when a business is given to me, no matter it, it it's in a newborn state, you know it's fresh, and I have the opportunity to grow that business however I so wish. If I wanted to be the biggest thing, the greatest thing, I have the power to do that. Um, but when it came to me having my daughter, uh, it was it. You know, it was like a business, but it was something different. It was something that challenged me, something that matured me, something that kept me focused uh, in a way where I was like, you know what? This is a replica of me. I have the opportunity to make this better than who I am. And mm -hmm. um, it, it's just been a journey, man. And and to have that journey, my daughter's with me. She's here now. Every time I'm at work, my daughter's right by my side. And um, we're embarking this journey together. So it's it's very special to me. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I like uh, uh, I just my mind just went blank. <laughs> Something you just said, I was fitter, I was fitter. Oh, I know what I said. Um, what you said, you have the the opportunity to make your daughter uh better than you. And now this is something that I share on the podcast uh, of often is that I believe that as fathers, we we want our daughters to be better than us like our daughters are or is the best version of who we are you know and i always say uh because i had this conversation with with the fathers because a lot of them like i wanted a boy first you know i wanted a son and i said well sometimes god god wants us to change and so he gives us daughters right mm -hmm. and the good part about that is because when you think about it a lot of times when we think about having a son we're thinking about i'm gonna make him just like me like he's literally going to be a little mini me. And oftentimes that's the good and the bad. Like we don't even, the, we don't even make the decision like, oh, I'm only going to give him the good stuff. We're like, no, he's going to be just like me. So we instill the good and the bad into our sons. But when we as fathers have daughters, it's like, no, she's only getting the best. You know, she's only getting the best part of me. And so our daughters end up being like, if we were girls, that would be like the, us and you know what I mean. And so <laughs> yes, I, sir, I, yes, I love to have that that conversation because I, I I I've found it to be true, and most of the fathers that I talk to agree with me. It's like, no, I'm only going to give, I'm only going to instill in her 
the best parts of myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And so every time you see her, it's like a reflection of, of you. And it's like, yeah, I, I love that. So, um, yes, <laughs> let, let's, let's jump into a little bit. Uh, so how did you even find out you were going to be a father? How was that journey? <laughs> Man, so, um, uh, take it back. I, I guess the the year that I found out, um, you know, it was funny because you know my wife, she always playing around with me. So you know, sometimes she would, she would tell me something, and I'm like, Mary, girl, you playing? And you know, sometimes she just want to see the reaction. But when mm -hmm. she told me she was pregnant, I was like, you ain't pregnant. And she's like, damn, yeah, I am. So I said, well, I said, well, shoot. I said, well, let me let me go get some tests. So and I want to go get the you know the cheap test dollar store. I was like, you know, just to be sure, I'm going to go spend some money. Let's, let's go to Walmart and get the, the good stuff just to make sure. And it, we, she was pregnant. And, you know, at that, at that time, you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't like, you know, most people, you know, when they, they hear that they're pregnant, some are like in shock, like, oh, what I do? And then you got those that are very excited. Uh, I was in between both emotions because um, not that I wasn't ready to have a kid, but, you know, mm -hmm. When, when you're very ambitious, you have goals and you got things that you're trying to accomplish because, you know, once you bring life into the world and you know um, what happens when you bring life into the world, you want the best. You want to make sure that mm -hmm. you're not struggling. You're not depending on your parents for your kid. You want to have everything in order. And I had things in order, but it's not what I desired. I want it better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when it happened, you know, I just accepted the fact that God was just saying, you know what? For what she was desiring to have, you already were in position for it. And I took that as a win and I just went with it. All right. All right. Um, so <laughs> and I think that that's one of the things, like you said, uh as a father, you never really feel prepared, you know, especially financially, you know, because you know it's a whole nother uh situation. And and a lot of times people don't even understand that. Or even even your kids don't understand it. So I always said about my daughter. My daughter is going to be 21 right now. Wow. And we were recently having a, a conversation uh, about finances, you know. And so she's she's here with me uh, home from college. So she's here with me. Mm -hmm. And so we're having a conversation about um, just moving to a larger space, you know. And I'm like, um, I did the math. I did the considerations. And I'm like, um, that's, that's not going to be a good look for me. Like that, that wouldn't be a smart move on, on my part, you know, because right now I'm carrying everything, you know, which is fine, which that's my job, but I'm not going to put more on my plate. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and she's like, well, why don't you just get another job besides the job you have? I'm like, why would I get another job? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I, what do you mean? Why would you get a job? You know what I'm saying? But she's like, why don't you just get another job? I'm like, because number one, I already have a job. Right. <laughs> and yeah. then number two, I'm in the process of, of building, you know, my own business and stuff. You know, like I got the um, I have two, the two podcasts. I got the ones that I'm producing. Uh, also like yourself, I'm a speaker. You know, so I got all these other things that I'm trying to build for us. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm like, another job is going to help. It will be me helping somebody else's family. You know, that's, right. you know, they're going to take away from our family. So that's a, uh, that's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make to stay where we are now in order for me to, to be a little bit uncomfortable now in order to make right. our future comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, um, yeah, they, they don't always understand that, right? <laughs> so <laughs> getting back to your story, though, getting back to your story. So um, you told me how you found out um, that, that you guys were going to have a, have a child. But did you guys wait to find out the, the sex of the child or did you guys know beforehand? So we didn't, we, you know, um, we didn't, we didn't do like the, I guess the tradition that everybody does, you know, the gender reveals and all of that, um, you know, in my family, I'm not saying we're private, um, but, you know, there's a lot of things that we like to do just within our family, you know, being that this mm -hmm. was the first time. So um, with everything going on, it was, a, my wife had a lot of complications and I'll, I'll get into that with the next question, but um, um, with, within those complications, you know, we didn't want to celebrated so much so we just went to the we had the doctor let us know what the sex was 
And then, you know, we, we hold it dear to ourselves, and they give us time to prepare. And then when we felt like the time was right, that's when we let um, everybody know what the sex was. Because especially when it came to my parents, they were pushing for a boy. And, you know, I, I, wanted, I wanted a boy. But you know what? Honestly, I was like, I told my wife, I said, you know, if I had a girl, I'll be, because eventually if I had a boy, it's going to be named after me. It'll be a third. But I said, with a girl, I'll be able to create the whole name, you know, like it's it's very it's very special, it's special to me. So when we had the girl, that was amazing. But that's how we did it. We we just went to the doctor, they let us know, and then we went from there. Yeah, yeah. So you you mentioned about you know your wife uh, having some complications, uh, and and you know so. I give you the opportunity, you know, even share uh, with that story because one of the things that I and I've said this several times. One of the things that I want to do with this podcast is to also give dads um, a opportunity to see some of the things that we as fathers that we deal with, you know. So even the good parts of of us having daughters and and everything that we share, but I also want it to be realistic, you know. And so everything doesn't always run smoothly. You know, sometimes we have some challenges that we as fathers have to deal with. And so my very first uh, guest that I had, <clears throat> excuse me, my very first guest that I had on the podcast was a friend of mine uh, who was fresh, fresh, right? So he had just had his first child who was a daughter. And at the time that we recorded our uh, episode, she was only two months, right? And so I think of her every time I have a dad on and I think of him. And so I asked the questions that he may need to know, you know what I'm saying? And, and things that he may need to learn from, from us fathers who, you know, farther along in the, in the girl dad journey. Again, my daughter's going to be 21, you know, so I'm way down the street, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, uh, if you will, you know, give us a little bit about the backstory of, of even how, you know, that, that journey of even getting your daughter here. Yes, sir. So um, it, it, it was very complicated, man. Um, so let's just, let's just say, so when we found out, you know, a few months into it, I, I would say within the, between the four to six month mark um, of the pregnancy, you know, we're going to the hospital, you know, getting our, our daily checkup. Within that time period, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fresh entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur since 2016, but I just started a new business, which is Gentleman Boutique. So that's why this is so special to me. But um, when as I was, you know, getting the business jumping, you know, finances is up and down. It's not steady because, the, you know, it's a newly business. So I'm already dealing with that. So finances is an issue. One uh, another issue was my my wife's a teacher. Um, so there was some things that I guess were hidden that we didn't understand of certain clauses of when you are pregnant or when you are having a baby. You know, they don't pay for you to have that that uh, that leave. And we didn't know that. So that was new to us too. So now that we're, we're having the baby, you know, my wife is not getting paid. So that's another additional stress. And on top of that, you know, just bringing her here, uh, my wife had a short cervix and this is her, her first baby. So she's dealing with a short cervix. So everything is, is detrimental to her um, of what we're hearing. Then we was hearing the doctor saying the baby was trying to come out sooner than what she was supposed to. So I think she was trying to come out at like 20 weeks. And it was way too early. So she, she's still, uh, you know, so that, that was something that we're dealing with. Um, they're saying that she can't go to work. So because um, if any type of pressure or she, she right. sits wrong or stands wrong, the baby could just come out. She's dealing with that. And I'm and I'm stressing out too. I'm like, oh, man. Uh, so it was that. They was trying to take blood. Um, they couldn't get no blood out of her. So it was almost like she was a, a walking dead person, you know, type deal. You know, and... So just dealing with that, and and it's like you know, yeah, we have family, but like I said, we try to do everything because we don't want to put any other stress on our family. That's just us, you know. Other kids is like, hey, mom, as long as you're here, dad, as long as you're here, hey, I'm gonna use you up. But you know, we, me and my wife, we, we try to keep our stuff with us. We try to handle it, God and us. And so as we're going through that, man, it was just it was just something different because you know everybody has their own story when it comes to to pregnancy. But it was really something to us because, you know, when you're in the hospital and, and you hear the doctor out of her mouth says, you know what, it may come to a point that you may have to choose if you want your wife here or if you want your daughter here. And to hear that at, at my age, man, it, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's something, man. 
And it, yeah, it, it was something, man, because, you know, to not, not everybody knows this story. And I didn't, I, I never shared it to my mom. I never shared it to my dad. I never shared it to her family. As we're going through is they just see us as champions. They're just like, oh man, it's cool. We're letting them know we're hitting different marks. But just to hear that at the time, the only comfort that we had was God and me and my wife and letting my wife know that, like, hey, man, this is new to me. You know, um, I don't know what to expect, but I'm here with you, whatever, whatever it may be. I got you. You know, I was I, the whole step of the way. I, I'm making sure she was comfortable at the house. If I had her at the store with me, I bought her a whole lounge chair so she can lay down. I mean, everything, anything that she needed. Uh, even at church, when we went to church, I bought her another portable chair. It was one of those lounge chairs that you could set up real easy and she could lay back. I, I did whatever I had to do. People might have thought I was extra, but I was looking for I was I was I was looking out for my wife and us because at the end of the day, you know what? <laughs> I, we can't point the finger of how the baby got here. It was both of us. But we have a baby coming in and we want to make sure that everything is right. Everything's dressed right, dressed. So when it came down to that, as we're going through the pregnancy, we're dealing with those issues. And then when I thought that wasn't enough, you know, I'm in the car. I remember I was in the car and I was talking to God. I said, God, I said, this is this is a lot. I said, I'm a strong, I wanted, I'm a strong soldier. But I said, you know, you gave me a baby when I'm trying to birth the business that you told me to birth. I didn't ask you to have a men clothing store. You told me. You told me this is what I need to do. I did it, and you you give me a baby when I need more money. So I'm 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 tripping. And he, I didn't hear nothing from him. It was like a dead silence. And I remember either that same day or the next day, um, I took my wife to go get something to eat. And I, I remember the doctor that the doctor from where we had because I believe she, I believe she had an incident, and I and I think the incident she was feeling some some cramp. And they said once you start feeling things, you need to you need to go to the doctor. So I think we was there like maybe a night, a night, uh, maybe a night or two nights. And the doctor said, we was clear to go home. And she said, I need to let you know, please, whatever you do, don't get in no accident. Don't get in this, that, or that. Cause the baby can just come on. And we said, okay, we got you. So we're extra careful. Now I took my wife to go get something to eat and we ate, we're on our way home. And all of a sudden I'm at a stop red light. Boom. Mm. Livid. I was livid. I was livid. Because I know what the doctor said, and I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I, I looked at my wife, and I just. I jumped out the car. I don't even. I, I think the car automatically went in park. I got the car, and I was just livid. It took. It took a minute to cool down. I wasn't. You know. It, it, I wasn't trying to take it out of the person, but it was just the idea of the situation we're already going through, and you made it worse. Mm -hmm. So you know, we're dealing with that. And as soon as we finished with the getting, you know, getting the, the license registration, changing information, all that good stuff, well, that, well, that stuff, um, we, I had to rush her to the hospital. As soon as I rushed her to the hospital, the next day, we're getting ready to have a baby. Now, keep in mind, my daughter was not supposed to be here till January 19th of 2023. But she ended up being here December in December. So it's like, when that happened, I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, I, I just, it, you know, it fast, it fast rush everything. And like, like I say, you're, you never know what you're ready for. You never know. Cause our story is not like somebody else or people, some people just, it's smooth, you know, it's a smooth transition, yeah. the most exciting thing. And some people it's devastating. We never know what category we're going to fall in. And for us to be in that category, you know, I think there's another, there's another lady at our church whose baby's born December 20th as well. You know, and she gets happy every time she's like, oh, our, our, our daughter is the same, our, our, you know, our kids are the same, have the same birthday. But when me and my wife think about it, that's why we we made a decision that every time it's around her birthday, we're going out of town. I don't want to celebrate with no family. It's just me, my daughter, and my wife. Reason being, because I really don't want her to ever depend on family celebrating her. I want her to be able to celebrate herself. And that's why we take her out of town. So we started last year. We went to Zero. We did it big, and she was just so overwhelmed because it's her birthday and Christmas. So, I mean, we got pictures of her mouth wide open, her eyes just like, "Oh my gosh, Dad! Like this is so surreal." And I always want her to keep that moment. My baby's a happy baby. She's smart. I mean, I mean, oh my gosh, you you would have never knew that she went through that stuff. She, that's our miracle baby right there. And that's why we, we take it personal. You know, people get mad because we don't allow her to, you know, be at a parent's house or people to hold her and stuff like that. And I tell my wife, they don't know what we've been through, especially you. 
Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't care how people feel. It, this was this was something this was something detrimental to us. And at the end of the day, now as God has given us this opportunity, I mean, as long as God allows us to live, we're gonna make sure our daughter has the best. But yeah, that's just a snippet uh, of everything that happened then. Yeah, yeah, and we definitely uh, thank God that that they did make it and that they are okay and and here today. How, how old is your daughter now? So my daughter, she'll be fifteen months next week. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. So uh, um, I wanna I wanted to so and, and this might be early, but I, I don't think it's is is probably not that early. But one of the things that I know is that as we're raising our daughters. Um, and we're teaching them, you know, different things that they're also teaching us too, right? We're also learning from them. And so one of the questions that I'd like to ask is, what is something that your daughter has taught you? Like in this journey of you being a father and, you know, we don't know everything, you know, but then there are some things that our daughters teach us, you know, and it's just like, oh, I never thought of that, you know, or, or whatever the situation is. So if, if it applies, you know, what is something that you think you've learned from your daughter, even at her young age? Oh, man, my daughter, she teaches me everything. I mean, different things every day on a daily basis. But um, one thing that I could really say um, that my daughter has, she, she's definitely matured me a lot more. Um, she, she teaches me how to be more attentive, focused, patient, more loving, and more sensitive. Um, and those, and I love that the way that she does it, because, you know, with my wife, you know, uh, I, I, I try to be the best, the best, I, I try to be her, her prince charming, her king, you know, every, anything I always told my wife, I said, baby, you know, um, anything that we go through, I want to make sure that it's growth. If we're in a relationship or it's that, that season that you feel like you're not growing with me, I am not the one. I'm not the one. If every year that we're together, you cannot see a difference from last year, I'm not the one. You're wasting your time if you don't see no growth. I told my wife that. And every year we do like our, our own, you know, you know, our when we cast the vision for next year, I'm like, babe, okay, let's look at this year. How's everything? Babe, we did this, we did that, we did. Exactly. So when it comes to my daughter, she's another woman. So I got two women in the house. So it's like certain things that I can get away with my wife, I can't get away from my daughter. Like, let's just say my wife did something and I react or I fuss or I yell or whatever the case is, I can't do that with my daughter because I see that she's watching. And I remember one instance, I just, I, man, I was, I had a bad day, man. It was real, it was rough. I had a lot of stuff in my mind and I just, I just wanted some time to myself just to wind down. Of course, my wife kept coming in and I said, babe, give me some time. Right, let me just wind down. And then she brought baby in there. I said, Keisha, I said, you know, I said, please give me some time. But I said it with my voice elevated. And I remember my, my daughter was just like, like a shock, like, cause she never seen that. And it wasn't no aggressive. I mean, I don't do nothing aggressive, but you know, there's sometimes we just frustrating the way we, we, we let it out. Mm-hmm. It's elevated. And so that, that happened. And my wife was telling me how my daughter was just crying. She was just crying. And my wife said that really hurt her feelings because your daughter just wanted to see her dad. She just wanted to see her dad. And, you know, ever since that incident, I say, you know what, no matter if I'm frustrated, I had a long day at work, I shouldn't just let my emotions cause me to elevate something. You know, I just mm-hmm. walk away, but control my elevation. And, um, you know, it, it taught me it taught me a lot of things. Patience, you know, stay focused. Don't overwhelm myself. And be, she's with me every day. So every day, it's like I'm trying to find different ways on how to do things, how to make things better. Because she's watching me. And she ain't gonna ever change because she don't know what's going on. She don't know daddy's at work trying to make money. All she cares mm-hmm. about is dad, I'm hungry. You know, dad, yeah, I'm not feeling good. Dad changed my diaper. Dad put some TV on, needs some entertainment. Dad play with me. That's what she's worried about at this age. You know, but even with that, I cherish those moments because there are some dads who don't get the opportunity to watch their kid grow up 24-7. You know, they're at work, the kids at daycare or whatever the case is. So me to be able to be in a position that I didn't ask for, but I wanted, I desired to have, be an entrepreneur, and to have my daughter with me every step of the way, man, it's as I'm growing the business, as I'm getting better, the business is getting better, my daughter's getting better. That just shows that anything is possible with God and when you have a focused mind. 
All right, all right, all right. So I, I think you may have you may have answered uh, one of my other questions, but I, I'll ask it still. Um, but the question before that, I want to ask is, you know, even as a young father uh, and a, a new father as you is, what do you believe, or what do you think is one of your biggest accomplishments? Uh, accomplishments that you've made thus far as a father. Mm. I'll say the the biggest uh, accomplishment is keeping the momentum, you know, not not stopping, keeping the momentum every day. Um, I'm used to challenges. I'm used to risk. I'm a risk taker. I'm a creator. I'm a risk taker. I'm an innovator. So I'm used to things being against me. I'm used to all odds being against me. But now I have a why. I, I have an even stronger why. I had a why mm -hmm. before, but now I have an even stronger why. So like not giving up is no longer in my category now because now it's like, hey, hey, <laughs> it's either now or never, but you're on the winning mm -hmm. team. So it's like now I just have more momentum now. Um, I was looking at my, my daughter and my wife to show that, you know what? Mm -mm. We ain't stopping here. If I'm mm -hmm. not going to stop, y'all not going to stop. And I'm about to be the best example ever. If I didn't stop then, I'm not going to stop now. All right, all right. And then, and like I said, you may have asked, answer this one because you did kind of uh, go there a little bit, but on the flip side of that, you know, uh, my next question would be what would what would you consider to be one of your biggest uh, regrets, should I say, uh, on the flip side? And I know you just kind of gave us an answer um, that could be, could be an answer to that question, unless you want to have something else that you might like. And, and then when I say regret, I don't necessarily, necessarily mean regret, but you know, um, maybe something that you could have done or should have done, or maybe even would have would do differently, you know. Um, and so that's why I asked that question again, because I want we're not perfect, you know, we're fathers, but we're we're men and we're not perfect, and sometimes we make mistakes. And so I just want to give, you know, acknowledge some of our mistakes. And and like you said, you 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 pretty much answered that question, unless you want to add more to it. You know, uh, but that will be the next question. Yes, sir. So um, I, I wouldn't say regret uh, because I did everything in my power. Let me tell you, sir, I did everything in my power to prevent having a kid. <laughs> I mean, it was it was I, I mean, when I say prevent it, I mean, me and my wife were married three years and I was I was like I was I was going as long as I could take it. You know, so, but I, I just like, I like, like in what you were saying that, you know, I already said it is, I felt like, even though I felt like I may not have been ready, God saw fit that I was ready. Uh, and it was needed. It was crucial uh, for everything to happen the way it did. And I was just telling my cousin earlier, I was like, you know what, if we never went through things that were, um, that happened in our life that you know, it may not, at the time may not have been what we perceived it to be, may not have been our greatest story or greatest achievement. But I feel like if we never went through that, we ne we wouldn't have a story today to tell. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I appreciate giving the opportunity to actually go through and say, yeah, you're going to go through some things that are detrimental, but you can come out because I'm a, I'm a witness that, hey, I'm here, I'm stronger, I'm better, I'm thriving because I can acknowledge that what was meant to cause me pain, God turned it around for my good. All right, all right, that's it right there. So we're gonna, we gonna cross over real quick into our next segment uh, of the podcast, which is, which is our getting to the core segment. And so uh, the getting to the core segment for my listeners is based off of an ebook that I wrote called The Core Four, which is the core four, the four core values that every daughter should get from her father. And you guys can get your copy of The Core Four from ebooksbyejames.com. Again, that's ebooksbyejames.com. And you get your copy of The Core Four, as well as some other uh, ebooks that I have there, um, that's there. And so um, for those of you who have, haven't been listening to the podcast that often, The Core Four Values, uh, when I wrote The Core Four, uh, as a father, you know, to my own daughter and uh, through my life experience, I wanted to find out at its core of what fatherhood and being a good father to your daughter looks like. And so I came up with the four core, uh, which is the four core guide, 
the four core values is guidance, affirmation, love and affection, and protection. So those are the four uh, that I came up with. And so uh, first, my first question for you, Charles, is just uh, overall, what did you think about the about the ebook and and uh, the information that it detailed in it? Uh, I, I I loved it. Um, I, I did. I, I read thoroughly through it, and um, I feel like everything that was taught is true. Um, it deals with um, men. I mean, in every facet. And that's 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 one thing I loved about it. And with the guide, the four core, you hit it on target. I think you could even choose which one super exceeds the other because I feel like those are all necessary when it comes to not only being a, a father but being a man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I really feel like those are, are very valuable. All right, all right. So you kind of uh, hinted into our next question that I will ask you, which is of the four, and and like you said, we we know that. All four of them definitely are important, but if it was one uh, in particular that probably held the most value to you to instill in your daughter, which of the four would that be? Guidance. I don't know why that's the top of my list right now, but I I feel like it's it's just proper guidance, and I feel like with with proper guidance, um, if I can guide my daughter in all truth and understanding, um, set an experience like none other. Um, giving her opportunity to make some errors, but still keep her focus on something. I feel like it's just like GPS. I mean, Mm -hmm. as we're going through the journey to our destination, we see a lot of different things, you know, that could take our focus off to make us stop because they're just so, uh, you know, just, I mean, it just stands out. But if I can keep her focused on the right guide, which is her destination, I have a point. She will get to her destination at one point in time. It may not be in a time frame that I expected her to, but she has a focus point of where I desire for her to be and where I know that when she gets there, it's going to help her with everything that she desires to be as a, a woman. So I, I would say guidance would be my first one. All right. All right. And so, uh, again, we're talking about the core four. But if that could be, if it could be the core five values and you can add the last value, what value would that be? Support. I just put support, you know, just to know that, you know, no matter how strong you get, no matter how, you know, big you get, you know, um, to know that you will always have your mom and daddy's support if you can't find nobody else's support, uh, friends. Uh, loved ones, whatever the case is, just know you have your mom and dad's support as well. All right. All right. So again, Charles, man, I I really appreciate you being on. I appreciate you um, uh, sharing your story and and, uh, definitely impactful. Um, I want you to have the last word, right? And I want you to leave us with a word of advice for our fathers or daughters, a word of advice or, you know, inspiration, have you, you feel free. Um, to, to express yourself that way and definitely leave us with your uh, social media uh, information where we can follow you and definitely keep a lookout for, for your podcast and that whole movement that you got going on. So I want you to share that with us and uh, give you a couple of seconds to think about that. Um, to my listeners, thank you guys for turn uh, again for listening to the Girl Dad Discussions podcast. Um, make sure that you guys are checking us out at our websites, our main uh, overall company website is dealhealfulfill.org. Again, that's dealhealfulfill.org. Make sure you guys are, are checking us out there. You can find out everything that we have going on. Uh, myself uh, as being a speaker and an author, uh, even a workshop facilitator, you guys can go there to find out even how to uh, contact me in order to come and speak at your school or organization and things like that. So make sure you're checking out that website. Also, check out our Deal to Heal Tees website, which is Deal, the number two, HealTees.com, which, which is our inspirational T-shirt uh, line um, website. Uh, put, some inspiration, put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tee and be inspired all day. That is our tagline. So go to Deal to heal tees.com in order to check out inspirational t-shirt line as well as our our uh podcast t-shirts merch which is there you get our, our 
our po- our t-shirt that represents the Girl Dad Discussions podcast is also there. And you guys check us out at ebooks by ejames.com. Again, that's ebooks by ejames.com, where you can get your copy of the core four as well as some other uh ebooks that I have on that website. Again, that's ebooks by ejames.com. Make sure that you guys uh check us out there. Also, subscribe to our text line by texting the word subscribe uh to the number 866 866- 326-0730 to receive text messages about new episode, book releases, and event information. So make sure that you guys join our text line. Um, also, I've been blessed to be a part of an organization called the Forgiveness Mission. Um, and what we do, we have free virtual workshops every quarter of the year talking about forgiveness, what it is, what it's not, forgiveness of others, forgiveness of ourselves, you know, even forgiveness of the world. We talk about everything surrounding forgiveness. And I think it's a very uh, important um, conversation for us to have, you know, on a regular basis. And so you guys can sign up for that. Again, it's a free virtual workshop. You can take it, uh, participate on your phone or on your laptop. Either way, uh, just go to forgivenessmission.com in order to sign up for that. Or Go to Eventbrite and look up Forgiveness Workshop and uh, hosted by the Forgiveness Mission, and you'll be able to sign up that way for our free uh, virtual workshops that we do with the Forgiveness Mission. Last but not least, I told you guys that I would tell you how you can win $100 from the podcast. What you must do, you must first subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our Facebook page, and to our podcast on Spotify. And after you've done those three things, then text the word WIN, W-I-N, to the number 866-326-0730 to qualify to win $100. The contest is ongoing and it's random, which means once you're in, you can always win. You don't never have to re-up. Just make sure that you text the word WIN, W-I-N, to the number 866 866- Three two six zero seven three zero, and when you text that word "win," make sure that you leave your contact information so that we can contact you back and let you know if you are our winner. A lot of people have been texting "win," but haven't been leaving your contact information, so we can't even get in contact with you if you are our winner. So make sure that you guys, when you text the word "win," W I N to the number 866-326-0730 that you also leave your contact information so we can let you know if you are our next $100 winner. Uh, Charles, once again, let me say thank you for being on, man. Thank you for uh, being a great girl, Dad, and sharing your story and expertise with me and my audience. We definitely appreciate it. I want you to have the last word, so the floor is yours. Yes, sir. Um, I'll just leave anyone who's going to be watching this podcast um, with this. Um, In the mirror we call life, are you reflecting what you want to see? If the answer is no, you have the power to change that. But keep in mind, it must first start with you until you're able to see the change you want to see. Now, my next question is, are you ready to push the button? And in the in the game we call life, there's a whole bunch of temp, temp, tempting buttons that we see. There's buttons that look flashy, they're colorful. But will you be in the right state of mind to determine which button is the one for you? Ah, that's the number one question. Hey, obscurity has a face, but so do you. Push that button today. You can follow us on www.thereboobygone.com. You'll find all of our social media handles about The Reboot. And if you want to do one-on-one coaching or if you'd like us to speak at an event near you, we'd love to do it. Check us out today. All right. All right. We can't end it no better than that to my listeners. Thank you guys once again uh, for tuning in to the Girl Dad Discussions podcast where we believe that the relationship between a door a dad and his daughter is one of the most uh, important relationships in a young lady's life and so our mission is to promote 
the voices of girl dads and daughters uh, throughout the world and give them all of our love and support. So thank you guys for listening. And until next time, you guys be blessed. Thanks for listening to the Girl Dad Discussions podcast with E. James. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our podcast on all your podcast listening platforms. Also, don't keep it to yourself, but share it with someone else that the Girl Dad Discussions podcast is on the air. Until next time, be blessed.